Hey everyone, Nick Shaheen here looking at Palantir. A stock I like, a stock I would be long, long term. Uh, it has good fundamentals. It is a speculative stock, don't take offense to it, I'm a fan of it. Speculation means that a lot of the stock price is f um, looking out into the future successes. Uh, meaning it's expensive now, which is fine. It is a growth company, um, and that's why people shy from it because you can't tang there's no tangible result right now so if you look at the traditional metrics they don't tell a good story but that's fine that's how growth companies get established just ask the people that shorted Amazon from the get-go because it was expensive you can't get growth on the cheap so if you pinch pennies you're not gonna accomplish much uh, this is a what is this a two-hour chart so every candle is a couple hours I can tell you right from the get-go I haven't done a video in a while on it uh, couple few weeks I can't remember exactly when but I discovered it not somewhere around here and I did a video and it caught the attention of a lot of people so I'll tell you what I liked about it it had good prospects it had good management um, it's in the right segment you know artificial intelligence I don't know how but it's gonna be all over the place everywhere uh, so they're right there they're at the forefront so if they if there was to be innovation along the lines oh we're gonna use AI now to brush our teeth they're going to be there probably doing something to help somebody do something with that. Uh, so they have a leg up. IBM has been talking this, I almost cussed, this stuff for, for decades, and look at where they are. Anyway, uh, so I'm not a fan of IBM. I'm a fan of this team. The management is not blowing smoke. They're delivering. They show. They do demo days. And it's pretty impressive. They basically empower companies to act on data instead of just hoarding it. Oh, look at all the data we have. Well, what are you going to do with it? So this is what the company helps helps out with that. So technically, trading-wise, it's pretty stable, except for this uh, GME craziness that happened here. Luckily, I was long, um, and I got out somewhere up here. I don't know where. I definitely did not catch the top. I rarely aim for that. You know, I hope for it, but I don't aim for it. That's not good methodology. So... Going forward, I tell you what, we now have a line that we need to hold from uh, March 5th, and we have a couple things that have happened since then. But first, let me talk about the range. Early on, like months ago, I noticed that there was a range between 20, 22 and 30. It was ping pong inside. It was a big range, but then it tightened up. There was 20, 25 and 28 ping pong, and then boom, GME happened, and then off to the races and ruined everything. Then it fell back into the range. They tried to reestablish the range, and then we had the tizzy with the NASDAQ falling, falling apart. Uh, really, it was a full-blown crash. Almost, you know, felt like a crash. Technically, I think it was a crash, and then immediately rejected it, this stock. So now we have a baseline. You do not want to get lower than 3.5, uh, not 35, March 5th. Uh, job number one in finding, quote, a bottom is um, it's going to be a process hopefully these v-shaped recoveries do no one any good they're unreliable and they shouldn't happen what you should do is stop making lows job number one they look like they did they they that was the low two lows that are higher then stop um, process the process continues with the second step would be to start making higher lows meanwhile i can still make lower highs that's fine so the stock could still be falling overall in a descending channel. That's fine. But stop the bleeding. Right? You establish a floor, you start building on the floor, and then you meet a level that has been challenging. And in this case, it's going to be somewhere around here, which would be also their exit from this descending channel opportunity. So the battle should build with higher lows. Lower highs is fine. You pinch the action into a point, and you break out from it. So I can tell you from looking at this chart, this orange line I didn't draw, that's an automatic point of control. So that's the, the box that they were trading inside of. And let me show you what I mean. I told you a range, right? So this is the, this is the range. So if I do this, see it? See that? So I'm going to leave it back there, like a visual reminder, that past uh, range is coming back into play. So the, the b onus is on the bulls is to climb back into the range. And they're going to face a lot of resistance, sellers. So fading is fine. Just don't make a lower low. 
uh, a same bottom is fine, a higher low would be ideal, and come back and tackle it at a second attempt. That's how you draw like an inverse head and shoulders or eventually a cup and handle. So you hit a resistance, you fade, you hit support, hopefully support made progress. You hit the same resistance, so the bulls are making progress over the bears. And then, boop, you pop out. You're going to repeat the process at 28. Same deal. You're going to face level resistance, but this time, <laughs> hopefully, you have a higher low, higher high trend going on on a shorter time frame. So this is where people flip to 15-minute charts, maybe, to get more information. See how it's visible that there's a ledge up here, if you look left, when I change the time frame? Um, so, and see how this is a clear trigger, like 24, 23.9. Technically, we'd be tr a, a trigger on this time frame, and this would be like a burst up, some consolidation, and another burst up. So this is how it happens. Different time frames, time frames tell different stories. Um, good stock, one that I would hold for a long time. Uh, if I own uh, calls, I would sell near dated calls against them if you don't know what that means then you shouldn't do them before learning about them uh, this is a uh, e-trade practice trading platform palantir options chain if i choose may for example it shows me puts on this side calls on this side if i own stock i can sell covered calls against it by but only covered calls never naked calls sold um, and only if I can actually deliver the stock meaning if I own shares and I don't want to sell them I should not sell a covered call because I'd be lying to myself I'm promising somebody I would give them my shares at X price and for that they pay me money so it is a profitable trade but I've seen it people get crippled oh my gosh I sold a call and I regret it I don't want to I don't know why to panic unless it's a tax reason you just rebuy it. You let them have it, and you keep your profits, and you rebuy it. I just don't get the panic. Um, so, cover, selling covered calls against stock works. Also, if I'm long a call, like the 26, wink, wink, for August, I can sell calls against it shorter term. So, if this one cost me three, four, three or four dollars to buy, I can sell. I could have sold this week's. And collected money and if it died from like like there were 7700 41,000 that that are going to die tomorrow <laughs> uh, today is 331 tomorrow is the last day of the week trading for one April Fool no that's not not because it's April Fool's it's Easter in the US so the these are like expiring for zero so somebody like 70,000 contracts somebody sold and they uh, whoever sold them made money or it looks like they're going to win because they're going to die for maximum gains for the sellers and those who bought it hopefully they, they, they make money lost their money But that's the point of selling covered stuff you want them to die for nothing so you sell it and you it dies for example if I want to repeat the process for next week and I sold uh, well there's not a lot here so let's say for April okay so for April I can sell and collect 40 cents so if I have a thousand shares I can collect four hundred dollars and if by April uh, in 16 days the stock is below 26 that four hundred dollars are mine if the stock is above 26 I have to deliver the shares at 26 so if I own them I just they may get signed away from me taken away uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to do uh, see the opportunity look at the chart and see if it makes sense sometimes it doesn't make sense so I just don't do it in this case the stock is doing the right things on the chart so I'm not too worried about owning a call out in time if it's a short-term call then yeah I would be worried about it but out in time if I have 80 days 100 days 120 days two years for it I'm not that worried about it it's a good company eventually it will recover uh, from this malaise and it will take its spot among the leaders right now it's a more of a speculative bet and that's not an insult just because it's not proven Amazon was a speculative bet until very recently Tesla as well and uh, so now they've earned the right to uh, to demand a premium in this case the premium is based on hope for future performance okay so this is the easy way of looking at stocks fundamentals I don't know if we can discern anything of it let me see I'll look them up anyway so this is just the easy way 
the blue is sales, uh, net income is falling, assets are building, debt levels are falling. Not a bad statement. So if I go to quarterly, that's probably better. Uh, revenue is uh, quarter one of last year, 220, 250, 290, 320. They're running at about a billion a year, a little over. Not too shabby. Let's see if we got some statistics. Okay, so there's no earned PE because they're losing money, right? So price to sales is an indication, and it's 36, and that's not cheap. Okay, it's not crazy high, but it's definitely not cheap. Uh, so whoever buys a stock today is giving it 36 years worth of sales in today's stock price so there's definitely that's why i said it's a speculative a speculation about future um successes so they want to grow into that multiple and it does happen to give you um an absolute comparison tesla's is like 22 ish last time i checked it could have moved now uh amazon is four which is super cheap. That's why I say Amazon is cheap. Uh, other stocks, Zoom is probably double that. I haven't checked in a while. At one point, it was over 100. Uh, so this is definitely not cheap, but it's not a reason to short it because it's, quote, expensive. Nick signing out. Oh, nothing here was a recommendation to do anything, by the way. It's me sharing my thoughts on a stock and my levels and uh, some trade techniques like selling covered calls or selling diagonals or calendars with options which is basically cover calls against options next signing out